stratification is the answer to spina bifida and to reducing the rate and the incidence of this uh, complication. What is spina bifida? Uh, for our younger students, I would uh, just go through it briefly. It's a birth defect in which there is incomplete closure and the membranes around the spinal cord during early development of the pregnancy. And this is as early as third and fourth week of conception. Incidence is 0.5 to 5% per 100,000 per 1,000 births and 15% is for a culta. Culta is one of the types of it which we are going to uh, discuss. There are basically three main types of it, the uh, spina bifida occulta where the bones are a bit widened but the skin is completely covering off, over it and there might be a bit of hair growth on it apparently or maybe a dimple over the skin there. But basically the meninges are in place and the nerves are in place and it's just a slight uh, widening of the vertebral space. Then uh, there is the second type is the meningocele where the meninges protrude through those through that vertebral defect and can be seen uh, from uh, can be seen at the uh, at any level where it develops. Then is the meningomyelocele where along with the meninges when the nerves protrude <coughs> through that defect, so it becomes meningomyelocele. There are many causes of it. Many are unknown, but those postulated are the genetic, environmental, folate deficiency during pregnancy, certain anti-seizure medications, obesity, and poorly controlled diabetes. So how do you know that the child has these problems? The first thing is that if a patient is having good antenatal care, and is having antenatal ultrasound. So most of these abnormalities are picked up during the anatomical survey, uh, anatomical ultrasound survey that is done uh, between 18 and 22 weeks of pregnancy. Or even in, earlier, if it is done earlier, so it can be picked up even earlier because this abnormality develops very early in the pregnancy. After birth, what can we do? Uh, now, how would you know that this is spina bifida? So the, there can be some physical problems, neurological problems, and other function defects. So among the physical uh, problems are the leg weakness, orthopedic abnormalities like club foot, uh, hip dislocation or scoliosis, uh, bladder and bowel control problems, <coughs> and uh, poor kidney function with repeated urinary tract infections. Uh, there can be some pressure sores and skin irritation, abnormal eye movement. Then among the neurological problems, there can be arnold caries, two malformations, hydrocaf, abnormal development of corpus sclerosum in 70 to 90 percent of patients, or cortex abnormalities may be <clears throat> present in some cases. So other executive functions can be affected which uh, depends upon the area and board. It may be, uh, it may include planning, organizing, initiating and working memory problem solving distractions. Then academic skills are also affected. Individuals with spinal bifida may struggle academically, especially in the subjects of mathematics and reading. And learning disabilities are also noted in such patients. So how do we screen? <clears throat> the main things, as I mentioned, is the ultrasound that we do, an anatomical ultrasound, and if it indicates that there is some problem, there is suspicion, so then we check the alpha fetal proteins as well, the levels in the maternal blood. And to confirm that, <clears throat> this can be checked in the maternal serum, or if you take the amniotic fluid out, the amniocentesis, when that is done, so it can be checked in that fluid as well. Now coming to the treatment. The main thing is that there is no cure for the da nerve damage that is caused by the spina bifida. And since there is no cure for it, so the main stress is on prevention of the disease. Because if a patient is born with it, so we have very little options. Standard treatment for risk of patients is surgery. But surgery would be for whatever problem they present with, it will be for that. And the treatment aims to prevent
prevent further damage. To reduce, to prevent further damage, to reduce it and damage of the nervous tissue and to prevent infections. That's the main object of your treatment. And in the management of such patients, there is a team of different specialities that will be involved. It's not just the obstetrician before the birth and the neurosurgeon after the birth. It will be orthopedic surgeon, uh, physical medicine and rehabilitation physician, uh, neurologist, urologist, ophthalmologist, and so on, depending upon whatever the need of the patient is. So, involvement of different specialities is seen. <coughs> Now, since we know that there is no treatment once the nerve involvement occurs, so the main focus would be on prevention of the disease. Prevention is with dietary supplementation of folic acid, and this is being shown to be helpful in reducing the incidence of spinal bifida. And sources of this folic acid are whole grains, fortified breakfast cereals, dried beans, leafy vegetables, fruits, and of course, folic acid in the tablet form. So much work has been done on, the, on this uh, 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 prevention of spinal bifida and we've got so many, uh, uh, so many um, papers on it where the main stress is on prevention. Uh, the main stress of prevention is on folic acid or folate fortification. Uh, in Pakistan and other low uh, uh, to middle income countries, uh, while providing the um, health care, uh, the main concern is the finances. In most of the countries, uh, they do not uh, provide full medical care to the patients and patients themselves are supposed to pay for their medical bills. Very luckily, folic acid tablets are very cheap. They are like a full month supply would cost rupees 30, which, which would be a 10 cents or less than 10 cents. Yeah, just 10 cents of the US dollar. So the whole supply of month would be this much. And if you are going for prevention, if you even to, if you increase to the tedious dose, so uh, say 30 cents per month. So I mean, that is affordable for many of our patients. And this is uh, this thing starts with the awareness. You, you need to know that you have to give this to your patients. And the other thing is that uh, uh, the patients are willing to come for the antenatal, and especially prenatal, prenatal checkups. Once the patient has a baby like this, she is always very keen to have good antenatal care for the next pregnancies. So you always, when you, you when you get a patient like this, it is not just this patient, but in order to prevent having further babies like this, you need to make her aware that she has to take this medication three to six months before planning her next pregnancy. So that is the right time to counsel those patients. So this would be one level where we will be uh, counseling the individual patients. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about the whole nation and the uh, uh, larger group of uh, people, so obviously this is where the input from our governments come and that will be in the form of fortification of our diet, different dietary products. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> There is this one article published in Journal of Orthopedics, uh, Orthopedic Reports, which uh, this the review article, and it says that the, uh, the, the uh, it is beneficial effects of folic acid fortification in the prevention of spinal bifida and reducing the orthopedic procedures. So obviously, when the patient uh, when when a baby doesn't have the spinal bifida, so the risk of ortho, uh, the, the, the orthopedic problems will won't be there, and it. Uh, this is again, uh, there's another, another uh, study where food fortification with folic acid for prevention of spina bifida and anticipally. So the conclusion in this is that uh, the, it is stressed again and again that the dietary products need to be fortified with folic acid. Global update on folic acid preventable spinal bifida and we have the general pre-proof which is the general of pediatrics and here you can see that uh, here you can see the line. Uh, 
clear, you can see the line from the, uh, on that side of the line, the number of cases uh, were quite high, but once the folate fortification was started, so the numbers have reduced down. All the, uh, the occulta, the meningocele, the myelocele, all cases have come down. So once the, the fortific folate fortification was done. This is uh, for the child-bearing woman, the folic acid supplementation is that we discussed, that's so that sort of a thing. And uh, whatever studies you <coughs> pick up for the spina bifida, say, uh, the main stress is on prevention. Prevention is the main goal where you would uh, will be focus and this would be uh, by providing good antenatal care, but of course for that they have to have good, uh, they have to have awareness regarding uh, these problems and many other problems that they can have during pregnancy. <coughs> for that we need further research, we need further education and we need further training of our budding doctors who will be just like uh, you sitting at the back. So you need to be uh, uh, getting information and education about this problem so that you can spread it in your community. Then again another study where uh, it is shown that spina bifida associated infant and neonatal mortality and case fatality uh, was declined when this fortification, mandatory folic acid, food fortification was done. Uh, in Pakistan, we have uh, oh, some, some steps have been taken and of those 447 mils producing, they are producing fortified flour. So they are in different parts of the country, but this is very little of what we should be doing, especially in our country. So wheat flour fortification project is there. This is the uh, in Pakistan, and this is one of the chakiyata, the uh, which is which is fortified. And then besides this, the uh, foods rich in folic acid need to be uh, conveyed to the patients and to the general public as such, where the beans, the peanuts, the sunflower seeds, and all these things are there. Folic acid supplementation, just as we discussed, that this is very uh, doable in even in our setups, and this should be done. Uh, so that's all about this uh, very important topic. If there are any questions, I'll take that. <coughs>